Welcome to our Emmys Costume Designers panel. Joining us today, we have Marina Toybina from The Masked Singer, Sarah Evelyn from Hollywood, Christine Beasley and Clark from Star Trek Picard, Janetta Boone from Yellowstone, and Lee Leverett from Patsy and Loretta. Thank you guys for being here. Um, so first of all, uh, I want to know when you guys start a new project, how do you start designing uh, costumes? Or is it even designing? Do you start research depending on what the project is? Do you do home boards? Uh, do you just sketch? Um, Janetta, let's start with you. Actually, you know, when, uh, when you start a new project, it depends on what kind of project it is. If it's a period project, you'll start with sketches, um, most certainly, because there's not a lot of um, imagery out there for some kind of period shows. So you'll need to start with your own conceptual ideas. You may start with your own sketches and then bring on an illustrator. If it's a more contemporary show, then you can build mood boards. And, then, and again, in some cases, there may not be that exact look that you're looking for. So you'll just put together images that can create that look for you. And then you go from there. A lot of what also happens is in collaboration with the director and uh, sometimes the production designer as well. So you can get the color palette uh, all seamlessly working together. And so the director shares his or her vision with you and you just nail everything right on the head. Um, initially, or the most important thing is to make sure that everything is able to be visualized and that we're bringing forth the vision of the executive producers as well uh, and the director and then sometimes the cast because the cast does have some input uh, with regards to what they're wearing. So my approach will be if it's contemporary I'll build mood boards and then if it's period then I'll do some sketching and then look for imagery to support the sketches after of course I've read the script probably ten times. <laughs> <laughs> I do think too that regardless of whether it's contemporary or period, you know, we're all in a visual medium um, of storytelling. And so we're starting with a script and, and we're coming up with our ideas, whether those are sketch pitches or mood boards. Um, it's all about character and story. So that's, that's kind of the beginning for all of us, I think. Agreed. I was going to say, I'm a, definitely a really, really big researcher, like, and not just necessarily garments. Like, I feel like when you first get a project, you're trying to figure out, you're, you're talking to your director, obviously, and, you know, all the people that are going to have, like, a big say in the creative, but, like, you're trying to figure out how to ground your project or where it's based or where it comes from or where it lives from. So I also feel like a lot of times I'll watch, try and watch all the movies in the genre. Yeah. And then also like look at artists and look at color palettes and look at other costume designers work. How have they treated this period? Cause I feel like it gives me the lexicon to kind of begin talking about the story and the characters. Yeah, that's very true, actually. Um, a lot of times, you know, people are our biggest research as well, you know, in life itself. I mean, sometimes I see the funniest looking people and I think, oh my gosh, if I tried to produce that character on screen, people would look at me like I was crazy. But then you realize that's the perfect character for some show that you're doing. And you're like, where's that photograph that I took? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I see photos of people sometimes them walking down the street because they're absolutely perfect you know research I think costume designers are like the rudest people watchers ever <laughs> we're constantly like other people's business and they're like why yeah. is staring um <laughs> cataloging, <laughs> cataloging that for later yeah. it's a night and day kind of job you know i think we're yeah. so living in a different type of a reality sometimes i feel like you know it's like the inspiration is so above and beyond even like what exists in front of you that are, it's not just like grounding the projects i think it's also grounding yourself like yesterday i'm like driving i'm like that's a perfect tree if i made a tree great i'm gonna you know photograph it right now and i look like an idiot on the side of the road photographing this big bark to see what can i do with fabric or how can i carve foam out of it you know yeah. so i think for us we're such dreamers and that's the most beautiful part about it that to be able to not just combine all the research that we're gathering but also like what is happening in our minds and our heads you know is the most beautiful thing and to be able to project that and create from ground up and just feel fabric and, and feel personalities and understand spirits and souls. I think it's so beautiful. 
like what we can convey, you know, at the end of the message. Well, speaking of fabric, uh, what are some of your favorite materials uh, to use and what's been maybe not your least favorite, but what's been maybe hard for you to use or maybe something you haven't used as much? Um, Sarah? Well, I think it really, really depends on the project and what you're creating. You know, like I was just thinking to myself, I wouldn't have thought before this project that I would have been so into wool jersey, but it's like such an amazing fabric for the 1940s and also for like creating the right silhouette and also it comes in good colors and also like it's not itchy. So I'm just thinking like, and, and I think in by the same vein, it's like, well, the hardest stuff to use is going to be like super slippery silks or something that you're like creating something you need to like work on the bias or, you know, something, a fabric that you need to behave technically. And it's really difficult to get it to behave technically and be washable and stand up, you know, to the test of time and be in the color you want. So I think that Actually, I think when you find a fabric that works and you love for what you're trying to make, you're like, I am so lucky right now because it never works out like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to say, like, also the fabric that, a fabric that works for you, it also has to do with your artisans that are creating something out of this fabric. Okay. So it's like nothing is just, nothing just works alone, you know? Yeah. It's like the people that you're working with that are making these garments and then can work this fabric. Yeah, that's very true. I also find that sometimes, you know, especially when you're working on period shows, you might find that perfect fabric, but it has lycra in it. And lycra didn't exist then. So then suddenly <laughs> you're back to square one because you're like, wow, this stripe is great. And then it stretches and you're thinking, nothing's supposed to stretch. Or you'll get that one actress that is constantly tugging on her skirt because it has too much lycra and now it's stretched out of shape, maybe, but not really. You know, so those have kind of, those, you have love-hate relationships with fabrics that stretch because while the stretching is good in some cases, in other cases, it's your absolute nightmare, you know? And then I've been from the opposite end. Yeah, know, yeah. Every single time, I'm like, does it stretch? Is it a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get the issues of bias, you know. And, <laughs> yeah, so it's so interesting. That goes back to exactly what you're saying. It's what you're yeah. working with and how you're yeah. starting out, you know, because it's like the fabrics that you guys don't want. I'm like, I need them. And then, yeah. like, you know, so, so it, it, it is pretty incredible, you know, when you follow the human body language. I think that's also like, you know, what it's all about. Fabric's so interesting. It's just like, it's like actors. What's your objective for the seed? And for us, it's like, okay, what do we need it to do? How do we need it to behave? What is it supposed to tell us visually? And you're trying to find all these things. And then, oh, I need to make a thousand uniforms. So I need, and what's the production lead time? I mean, fabric is such a grand endeavor. And I think it's one of those few things that people really understand about our craft, just what a blessing it can be to us and our creativity and what a huge obstacle it is sometimes. Um, and I've had some really interesting adventures in making my own fabric. <laughs> um, yeah. in, oh, you know, in, you can't get, like, it won't do what you want it to do. And yes. I can't get it. And, mm -hmm. you know, on Tron Legacy, we had these really crazy siren costumes that we made that were supposed to look like women that look like cars, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you start getting these like four-way stretch fabrics that do so much compression to the body that then you lose the female form and then you're building it back out and we ended up creating um a fabric like spraying balloon rubber that we put pigments and metal powders that are used in auto finish paint and like spraying that out on fabric to <laughs> we just couldn't find what we wanted so we just made it it was yeah. crazy yeah. but it was very fun that's what's great about also costume designers. Like I, I look at us as scientists, you know, it's like, there's one thing when you create a sketch and you're like, this looks amazing. And everybody's like, this is exactly what I want. And you're sitting home, you're like, this does not exist. At all. <laughs> you know, from my head, I put spots on it. Leopards are not purple. Yeah. So, and then you go back and you try to create your materials, but then it's so much more than that because then we're learning the skill of 3D printing. Then we're learning the skill of fabrications with any kind of element that's not fabric. You know, you're dealing with foams, with wires, like all these things that technically are not part of sewing, you know, and are not part of like, even like what I didn't learn in school. I didn't know the costume design could extend to so many avenues, 
you know, and what we have to do is, is pretty phenomenal. And okay. like I would probably say 90% of the time, nothing exists that what we're trying to create. So yeah. it's, you know, it's that 10% of luck and 90% of truly research science, yeah. you know, like collaborating with people, working with different artists on their own, trying to help us get the right colors, the right shapes, the right stretches, the right, you know, volume. It's, it's, it's a process. <laughs> You're, you're nodding along. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Everybody, you you just concur with yes, I concur with everything everybody said. <laughs> well, um, do you guys have a favorite costume from a movie or TV show that you would just love to wear yourself? Oh. Well, for me, I would say um, the 40s is definitely, I'm a very shapely woman, you know, so my body is from the 40s, even though it's 2020. So for me, when I did kind of like records and when I worked on the notebook, those shapes work really well with my body, the 40 and the 50s, because I have a small waist, or at least I used to have a smaller waist. And then, you know, and then I've, you know, and then I've got hips and things now are very, they lack curves. I don't know. Uh, when the cutting is happening with the fit models, the women aren't developed enough. And so you can't just walk in a store and buy anything these days. You, you have to, and that works the same for your actresses as well. I have a few actresses that prefer to have that shape in their garments and it just doesn't exist. And so when you find that perfect period garment, then you replicate it in today's fabric as if it's a contemporary show um, to just sort of help along, give you some assistance with getting that shape exactly how you want it. And even the fabrications as well. So I love period movies for men as well. I mean, I love men's wear, I love women's wear, I love the 40s and the 50s, uh, just because women were so elegant. So I would wear that all day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'd wear many things on TV. I'm all about the comfort, so. <laughs> I think like um, one of my favorite movies is The Cell. Um, and Ico, I thought was like pr probably one of my favorite designers of all time. Like yeah. just from construction to fabrication and the gowns that are in that film is probably like the white feathered dress that JLo wears in the desert is the most stunning thing. Um, if you look at the construction of how the collar seamlessly blends into it, you know, and break down the whole pattern making of that, that was pretty incredible. But I would probably wear the whole movie um, just because like every part of it is just so incredible. And like the craftsmanship back then, I think that's what we all still study now, you know. Yeah. I'm a I'm a total like jeans and t-shirt kind of a girl. So I feel like I'm like Martin Sheen Badlands or like James Dean, like <laughs> great white t-shirt, great pair of jeans and like a jean jacket. <laughs> but that's just what I would wear. I mean, there are so many movies out there with amazing costumes, you know, just not for me every day. <laughs> right, that's me too. <laughs> I think that's the beauty of costume design. It's like going to a store and you try to buy stuff for yourself. And by the end of like half an hour later, you put everything back. You yeah. know, <laughs> no, it doesn't think <laughs> all for you know I'll change the color and you don't and you just yeah. put everything back on the rack and at yeah. the end of the day like the chef not tasting is like, <laughs> you know, it, it really like comes down to it and so half the time you're literally working from morning to night on sweats you know and yeah. Yeah. morning to night is 18 hour days 20 hour days yeah yeah, yeah. 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 true story true Christine do you have a, a costume you want I wear? work behind the camera <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's exactly it Totally. I have <laughs> love, appreciation, admiration, but if you try to get me to imagine myself wearing something in front of a camera, it just goes blank. <laughs> yeah. yeah, same here. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. It was great speaking with all of you. Um, stay safe, wear a mask, and I hope we can meet in person one day. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Thanks, Joyce. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day.